Cat people, from Crazy Cat Fishing, and I'm Stacy. Thanks for watching. Thank everybody for taking the time out to watch my videos. I really appreciate appreciate every single one of y'all. Today, I'm gonna go over my rods, how I got them set up, what's in my tackle box, and let's get started. First of all, <clears throat> I got the ugly stick. The Shakespeare Ugly Stick Catfish Series Combo. It's a 7 foot medium heavy action rod. Uh, if somebody knows why, what these gimbits on the back of this is for, especially the cross thing back there. I don't understand why they put that on there. Uh, it's only fit in one of my rod holders. It don't, won't fit in my PVC pipe rod holders. Uh, but all my rods are all seven foot, medium heavy action. They have the same setup except for this one. The only difference in this one is the hook. This hook is a king catfish size five aught circle hook my other two are size eight uh might as well leave that in hook uh my line started running out from having to uh from being hung up and having to cut them up you know cut loose and everything i went to walmart to get some more line they didn't have 25 pounds so the littlest they had was 30 so I got 30 pound Berkeley Trilene, big game, green color on here. My leader lines are the same uh, line weight, 30 pound. But my main line, I have it run down to a, a rig wrap, easy slide, sinker slider with a two ounce bank sinker these things are cool if you get somewhere that you need less weight you can just unclip it take the weight off put a smaller weight on it or if you need more weight just add another weight to it and then i've got a a bead in between my sinker slider and my knot connected to my swivel to protect my knot uh, also these sinker slides, you could also use, like if people use three ways to drop their sinkers down or for dragon weight, you could just add some line to, to that down to your sinker and then you'd have a, like a three way dragon weight. Uh, back to my line, I've got the main line. Uh, what do you call it polymer knot to a eagle claw size one barrel swivel the same type of knot on my leader line down to my hook and I've got a no knot snail holding that on the reason you want to snail these hooks and I'll go through, I'll make a video one day to show you, but there's plenty on YouTube if you want to learn how to make a no knot snail. But with circle hooks, you want it snailed so that when the, pretend this is the fish's mouth, when it goes to pull away or you pull the line, it acts like a trigger and will set the hook in the side of its mouth 95 percent of the time but i'll tr i'll go over real quick try to explain to you without actually showing you you want to take your main line or your leader line you want to go through the front of the eye where the point of the hook is go through the front down the back of the shank hold that down then take your line and twist it around uh, i do it about seven or eight times 
then run it back through the back and out and pull it and that will cause the trigger effect okay uh, like I said all my rods all my catfish rods are set up the same way same knots uh, I took a bell off of a Christmas ornament and zip tied it to the tip so when I get a bite I'll hear it if I'm off somewhere that's doing something or fishing for other fish at the same time uh, these beads I got at Walmart at the craft section There's nothing special about them just something to protect your knot this rod is a Zepco RT special species catfish rod combo like I said they're all the same length same weight and everything and I've got this one hung up but uh All right, now we, we got, it. got it set up the same way, same lines, same knots. Like I said, but these are the size eight dot circle hooks from King Catfish. Uh, all three of these rods are supposed to have this pool noodle zip tied onto it. So if when I'm on my kayak, if I drop it, Whatever happens, it ends up in the water, it'll float. I don't know if it'll float if I've got a fish attached to the hook or not, but it will float the rod and the weights and everything on it itself, so you can easily get it back. When I first started out, I used uh, uh, leashes that I made. I'll put a link here somewhere to show how I made the leashes they're good for other things like uh, your uh, fish grips your uh, pliers and stuff like that but I have this zip tied on there for like I said so it'll float in case I lose it drop it in and I did read in that, this reel the handle on it broke so I took a, a bolt a flathead bolt and then I drilled a hole through a wooden peg stuck the peg on there took a bolt or a nut screwed that on there it works good until I can afford to buy me another reel to go on here I would like to put one of these optics Zipco optics 60 reels I did a unboxing of this I love this reel so far. You want to learn more about that or the unboxing? I'll put a link about that up here too somewhere. But this is a Zepco Hog Seeker. It's at seven foot, medium, heavy action. Same exact setup. Except this was a combo. It had a hog. It had a reel on it that had a bite alarm on here that had a sensitivity thing to it. You could turn it on and off when you got a bite. It would blink red lights back here and it would beep at you. Well, the whole handle broke off of it one day. So, I'll, that's why I switched to this. Uh, that's my cat fishing poles. Now, here is my this is a five and a half foot uh, Shakespeare ready to fish. It's a light action, five and a half foot, two pound test. I use this for if I know I'm only gonna catch like bluegill, sunfish, or trout. I've got a I don't know the size of it. I just go by the looks, so I can tell what size I want when it comes to swivel, but or not swivel, but a sinker. 
just a split shot. I don't know the size of the hooks. I don't pay attention to that. I just go by the size. I like one with a little bit longer of a shank. So that way the fish don't swallow the whole thing. And it's easier to get out of their mouth. Uh, I think that's all about this one. Then this one is actually my wife's. I confiscated it. It's actually a bait casting rod. It's a Shakespeare Firebird. Pink, purple. It's a woman's rod, but hey. But I put a spinning reel on here. This has a Shimano R2000 reel. I like this reel. It's little, but I like it. I like the fact that the drag is on the back. And it's just an all around good rod or reel. I got 10 pound. I don't remember the name of the brand, of, but all my rods have mono line on them. Uh, I use this rod for just pretty much any other type of fishing, like bluegill, small bass, whatever, lures. Uh, yeah, until I get a better rod, I'm, that's what I mainly use when I'm out fishing. I've actually had one guy on the video tell me my rod was upside down. I was like, well, I know that. I made it that way. And then this rod, all the, uh, my uncle made this rod. This rod is probably at least 30 years, 40 years old, I guess. Uh, he was a, back in the 80s, early 90s, I think, he was a professional bass tournament fisherman, William Prince. Uh, but he made this rod, gave it to my uncle, and he made my aunt one, and I've ended up with him. This reel, uh, it's just, it says extreme fishing. My uncle, my other uncle that this rod was gave to, put this reel on here. I don't care for it. If you know who makes this, please comment and let me know. But yeah, my uncle made this rod, did all this wrapping, braid, whatever you want to call it, handle, did everything to it. This is a bass rod, I believe. There's no markings, no name, nothing that I can see, but it's stiff. I would say that it's medium heavy or heavy. I know if I, if I tried to use this to uh, catch bluegill, I almost can't feel the bite at all. I just warp them right in. I just bought this. It's a... Now. A shad wrap, a double joint or a jointed shad wrap, deep diving suspending bait. It dives down to 15 to 18 feet. I haven't got to use this yet. I've had it for about a month now. I've not been out deep enough where I can use it. And I don't want to lose it because, well, I paid seven dollars or something for it. And to me, that's expensive for just one lure. Yeah, that's my rod setups. That's what I use. Uh, let's see. When I'm bank fishing, I use this gray bill net. It extends, collapses, whatever you want to call it. When it's extended out, it's five feet long. The net is made out of rubber. I like this for the fact that, especially with catfish, I don't seem to get tangled up in it as easy. And it does stretches. I think the hoop on it is a 15 by 18. And I can't remember how deep the basket actually is, but like I said, it stretches, which is really good. 
I know I won't be able to get no monster catfish in with it, but I only use that on the banks. I, I, when I'm on my kayak, I, I'll either use my grips or my hands. And uh, let's see, now it's time to go to the tackle box. My, my tackle box is just a plain old camouflage bag tackle box. Uh, I'll go through what is on the outside real quick. Over on the side pocket, I have a hand rag, something to wipe my hands off when I'm cutting bait. On this side, trusty TP. Never go fishing out in the woods or ri on the riverbank without the toilet paper because you never know when Mother Nature's going to call. <laughs> well, I ain't got nothing in this side pocket right now. Over on this side, I've got uh, two different type of trout power baits. I've got original scent. I call them pellet looking things and then this is a salmon peach trout bait. Uh, just assortment of sinker or not sinker floats, peg floats, bobbers, a, a wire stringer. The very front pocket. I hope y'all can see this. I got some homemade dragon catfish dragon sinkers that I made. I haven't used these yet. Honestly, I probably never will unless I'm in a boat. Uh, that's all that's in that pocket. In this very front zipper pocket, or the second zipper pocket, the big one, I have my scales. I don't know what brand name this is. I got it from Walmart. Excuse the transfer truck going down the highway with this Jake brake on. Inconsiderate people. <laughs> but uh, it, oh, it weighs up to 50 pounds. This is goes back and forth between my bag and my kayak. Then I have a set of fish grips. These also go back and forth between my bag and the kayak. My kayak. Oh. Well, hey folks, I'm back again. I'm sorry about that. My phone died on me during the last thing. I've had all kinds of problems with my phone. Either the heat from the sun or the battery's going dead. So, uh, in the last one, I stopped with uh, something about my kayak. Uh, if you don't know the kayak that I have, uh, it's a lifetime Tahoma. Uh, it's 10 foot long. It, it's uh, from Walmart. It's, I'll put a, another link <laughs> up here somewhere that tells about it a little more in depth it's a really good kayak don't sell it short because it's from walmart but let's finish what's in here <clears throat> all right so i left off i think i went over the scales it's, it'll weigh up to 50 pounds my fish grips uh both of these goes back and forth between my bag and my kayak uh, I have a pair of scissors for cutting bait. Of course, need no pliers for getting hooks out of fish's mouth and whatever reason. I need it. Uh, Germex. I just have this in my bag. I don't really ever use it. I don't know why it's really in there. <laughs> uh, a tape, 12 foot tape measure, just in case I, because being on a kayak, it's kind of hard to, if I catch a really big fish, it's hard to hold this up and get a weight on it. Even though I can stand in my kayak, I 
if you've got a 20 plus pound catfish trying to stand up in this, I don't know if I could do it or not. I don't want to try it. So I've got the tape measure so I can get to the length and the girth. And there's a algorithm or whatever you want to call it that you can do a mathematic thing and you can figure out how much it weighs that way. Uh, I live in Tennessee mountains so I carry a camping saw with me to cut especially if I'm bank fishing sometimes you come up on a place that is a really good spot to fish but bushes have grown up whatever and it has an extra blade in it uh let's see what else i got in here i got another knife just for cutting whatever i need to it's pretty sharp i got this from frost cutlery here in chattanooga tennessee it's just right down the road from us they're pretty reasonable really good quality knives uh, I also, if I'm bank fishing, I usually will carry a, a 22 pistol long rifle, nine shot with me. You never know what you're going to run up on that you might have to shoot. Hopefully, I'll never have to use it, but I'm not going to show it. Just, I, I don't want to. So, let's get inside of the tackle box where all the tackle is. I don't have a lot. I don't feel like I need a lot. I mostly do catfishing and I used to bass fish when I was little when I first started out fishing that's what I, all I thought it was about was bass fishing and now since I've caught some pretty good sized catfish bass just don't do it for me but I, I still try to catch them every once in a while on the lid on the inside the zipper part I have hair nets for when I used to uh, use chicken livers. Really good. If you want to use chicken livers, get your hair net. Put your chicken liver in there. Make a ball out of it. Tie it up. Cut the excess off. Put that on your hook. It allows the blood and all the juices to flow out really good. The fish doesn't seem to fill the netting as well that's a real good idea uh, extra line for uh, leader lines uh, and then I got another spool of line in case I get spooled or something happens and I need to re-spool my line or my reel uh, and then here we got the top mate power bank it's 20 I think it's 20,000 whatever it is it comes with its own uh, charging cord plus I put a wall charger in there in case I'm out somewhere and it starts to die and I need to charge it up I'm around electricity a place to plug it up but this thing on the front of it has three blue LED lights that shows the how much of the battery life you have left you got three charging USB ports on the front of it on the top front whatever you want to call it and uh, two LED lights that you can use for flashlights um, power button on the side you can charge three, I believe it's, don't, I can't remember exactly, but you can charge three smartphones like five times each. That's how much, when this is fully charged, how long this battery will last. I uh, found this off of a, a kite catfishing. Check his channel out. I'll try to put a link up here, but 
this is what he uses for his camera. This is what I use for my camera and my phone when the battery starts to die. <coughs> if I'm out for a long period of time or going camping and I need it. Uh, what else? Oh, he has it. Kite catfishing has it linked in his description. I went and, and clicked on the link. It took me to Amazon. I got it for eighteen dollars after shipping. It was close to twenty-five dollars, but at Walmart for the same amount of power, Walmart charged like fifty dollars for it. But it's a good thing to have, especially if you're doing YouTube or if you're going camping and you need got stuff that runs off bat batteries uh, here is my catfish type of box now this will clip on to your catfish pole so you don't have to carry your tackle and your fishing pole you need to clip this on to your fishing pole carry your pole and there you go now, there's not a lot in here I've got to replenish most of what's in this in this storage, I have a team catfish, uh, double action, I believe that's a 5 aught circle hook, I hope it's getting in there, I hope you can see it, and then here's a team catfish, <coughs> double action, 8 aught circle hook, this is the hook I mainly use anymore, especially for cut and live bait. This smaller one I'll use for real small chunks or for channel catfish. <clears throat> this box came with these uh, dip bait things. You dip it down in stink bait and it'll collect around the grooves. I don't use them, so I really don't know why I got them in there. I just got them in there in case I ever decide to use it. I don't know. Then I got some slinky dragon weights that I made. I might, might not put a link on how I made these because there's a video I have of these. If I don't put a link, just go look through my videos. You'll find them. Uh, in this compartment, I just have an assortment of different hooks uh, I believe this is a kel hook I don't know how well you can see I'm not sure what it's called I just know I used to use it for um, chicken livers and whatnot hopefully you can see it uh, there's different sizes of the hooks in there I also got some uh, different size treble hooks. If I'm channel cat fishing, I know I'm gonna keep them and eat them. I'll use them because usually if you use the treble hook, they'll gut gut hook themselves. <coughs> and then I got the eagle claw barrel swivel size one. I got the uh, Walmart craft section beads 98 cents for a pack of them. I need to replenish those too. Uh, the rig wrap sinker slider, easy sleep sinker slider. One other thing that's cool about these, you can take them on and off your line without having to cut your line and retie every time that you need to change. Uh, you can eat, actually set your rods up without even putting a sinker on there until you get to the water. And I don't know how well you can see, but there's a slit right here. You run your line up over through there, wrap it around, it comes up around, and it clicks into place and it slides. Uh, and these I don't ever use anymore. Uh, they're just still leaders uh, if I'm never up north somewhere around real toothy animals or if I'm in a really snaggy play rocky snaggy place hunting 
uh, flatheads. I might resort to using them. And then I use two ounce bank sinkers. Uh, I used to use the no rolls, but with the no rolls, you only get two in a pack, and they're like three, four, five dollars for just two. I can get four of those, just a little less than those. But that's all of my catfish gear. Roll, oh, roll up in one little container. Now here's for my creek fishing, trout fishing, whatnot. I'll try to hurry up and go through this. Uh, put this down so you maybe you can see. I use uh, mice tails, power bait. Uh, oh, and this box itself. Put your rod through here, close the lid, and it attaches to your rod too. Um, got some jig worms, different. Uh, I've only got two right now in here. Uh, then I got a fire tiger, a spinner, rooster tail. Trout hooks, and then these two lures. I'm not sure what this is called, but it's a rebel lure, and this popper is a rebel lure too. Let me skip down to here real quick. This is a Rebel Lure. It's a, a Creek Hopper. Rebel Creek Hopper. These things are good for small bass and uh, sunfish. And here is the Rebel Wheat, wheat Crawl. It's also good for small for bass and uh, Sunfish, but you get all four of those in one pack from Walmart. I only mainly use these two lures. They're really great in small creeks, like I said. Uh, they float, so they don't get down and get hung up real easy. Actually, all of them float. Uh, let's see. Got just a random float. Lover. I got up my homemade uh, beer bottle cap lure. I want to figure out how to put a spinner up here to spin around because I've noticed even with the swivel on there when you're reeling it in it don't really twist. Then I have this uh, Spinner, trout spinner. Uh, I don't know. Then some just small. Oh, come on, get out of there. Some small. I'm oh, gonna put some more in here. Anyway, small hooks for trout, bluegill, whatever. And then oh, a really wide variety of, that goes from. Of sinkers that goes from that size all the way to that size, and then I have this thing. I've got a few of them. I don't even know where I got them from or where they came from. If you know what these are, call me and tell me. Uh, there's one of those mice tails. And then I have this bugs are biting. I got this 
Look at all the minnows spinning. Blur. I got these in different colors. That's the only one I have in this box. Here comes my main tackle box. This one and this one usually will go on my kayak with me every time. I just got a assortment of really small trout lures all the way up to those lures or hooks to a plastic worm hook. And then I got a, a jig heads. got a treble hook in there. There's a sort of different split shots. I'm just a random curly tail rubber worm. Rubber in there. I have a swim bait. I like the action on this. I just wished he was different, a darker color. And then I have my other two uh, I'll make beer cap bottles, and then some poppy jigs throwed in here, and an assortment of those minnow spinners, different, co different colors, and I have this uh, prank bait. I bought it a couple months ago just because I like the color of it. I don't know if it'll show up, the sparkles and stuff, but it's pretty. I have this minnow duck, or crankbait. I have this bass crankbait. When my daughter won these <coughs> in a, a fish, a kids fishing day tournament, got rattles in it, paddle tail swim bait. Over here I got spoons. I made these out of actual spoons. My daughter painted them. This is a tablespoon. This is a teaspoon. I told uh, my daughter had a <laughs> little pony horse. <clears throat> my little pony. And I used that for the, the skirt on it. I have a Fire Tiger spoon. <clears throat> I use that in New York in sub zero temperatures. As soon as I throw it out and catch it in, it was caked in the ice. It wouldn't spin. It wouldn't do nothing. And then I'll have that type of a spoon. I have a uh, two-inch curly tail white grub. I have uh, see which one is this? These are just green curly tail crappy jig grubs. Uh, fire tiger grubs. A paddle tail shad. Assortment of snap swivels, fingernail clips for clipping your line, a slip sink for a, you know what that is. And I have a buzz bait that I lost the skirt off of that I throw a uh, plastic on as a trailer. 
Then I have two Booyah spinner baits. One that has a trailer on it and one that don't. Got a jig, jig head. I'm not sure what what kind you call it. Like I said, I'm not into bass fishing anymore, but I know different different sizes of heads, different shapes, or different kinds with a trailer on it. <coughs> and that's it for that one. Now we get down to the one that I really never use. I'm gonna put this real quick. Not gonna pull everything out. Different types of crappie jig, feather jigs, colors, shots, sizes, shapes, whatnot. I'm through here. And here are the plastics I have. I have a Kaylin sidekick. They're kind of clear. They're like a pepper. I don't know if you can see or not. Hold it up. I have a Z-Man 10 times tough razor shad. Just random plastic. Random random plastic laying around. I have a culprit. If you're a bass fisherman, you probably know what this is. Uh, like I said, I hardly ever use plastics. Here's a rattlesnake tournament series. This is what I use for my trailers on my other lures. They have, they're in some kind of a salt mixture thing. And then I have a Kalen's, uh Bleeping lizard. These are clear with a purple speckle to it too. And then finally a blue, a big fat blue grub plastic. So, yeah, that's all I have, that's all I use. Maybe later on in the future, maybe I'll use some other stuff. But right now, I just, I mainly catfish, so I don't really mess with too much other stuff. Like I said, I, usually when I do fish for bass, I'll use worm, real worms or minners. Uh, I catfish, I use cut, cut bait or live bait. And I usually go catch my own bait off a rod and reel. I need to get a cast net so I can catch my own bait. My shad. <coughs> I'm eventually going to get into going and getting skipjack. Sorry for the dog barking. A cat going across the road. Uh, anyways, thank y'all for watching. I know this is probably a long boring video. If you made it to the end, Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. You know, I try. I don't like fishing that too hard. I'm just out here trying to have fun, document my catches, and show the people that even a simple poor man can go out and have fun and catch some big fish. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.